All right, so here are our notes on inter and intramolecular bonds, okay? First thing we want to remember what those prefixes mean. Uh, inter meaning between. When we talk about intermolecular bonds, we're referring to the bonds that are between two, two molecules. And your intramolecular notes, bonds that are within molecules. Uh, when I list these out, I'm going to list them in terms of uh, strongest down to weakest on our paper. Okay? Our strongest type of intermolecular bond are our ionic bonds. And for ionic bonds, we covered this a little bit last time, uh, what you have is that you have electrons are either transferred or stolen. I like to say stolen. It's a little bit more impactful. Uh, sometimes you'll see it transferred. So an example of that would be we had a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. And when these two come together, uh, what's going to happen is that chlorine is going to steal an electron away from sodium. How we know that is we look at their electronegativities. So on that electronegativity uh, periodic table, which you have here, uh, we would look up sodium and chlorine. And we would uh, write those down. So for sodium, it was 0.93, chlorine 3.8. One, six. So when we, uh, we're going to take those numbers, we're going to subtract them. Okay, and we get uh, 2.23. This number here, we're going to look on our continuum on our periodic table of elements, the electronegativity one. Okay, and that's where it tells us if it's ionic or not. So we're somewhere over here in 2.23. Uh, we're in the ionic range, and ionic means that electrons are transferred or stolen. Uh, so since chlorine has the bigger electronegativity, we're going to give it a negative charge because it's going to take one electron away from sodium, and then the sodium is uh, going to have a positive charge now because it lost one electron, it lost a negative. And... Uh, it's this positive and negative, that's the, actually the bond between them. That's the attractive force that's between them. Okay? This force is so strong that sodium and chlorine, uh, uh, when Na and Cl form a bond, that it's always going to be a solid at room temperature. Uh, so ionic uh, su substances that have ionic uh, type bonds, they're going to be uh, solids at room temperature. That's a very, very strong bond. Okay? Uh, the next one is uh, called unequal covalent. Uh, it's also called polar, I'll put this in parentheses, polar covalent. And uh, unequal or, uh, or polar covalent bonds, you have unequal sharing of electrons. Unequal sharing of the electrons. The analogy we used is uh, if, uh, if your parents have the car uh, five days a week and you have it maybe one or two days on the weekend, uh, that's an unequal sharing of uh, that car. So that's what kind of what happens when we use uh, water and oxygen as our example, a bond between, uh, excuse me, hydrogen and oxygen. And we look up their electronegativities. 2.1 is for hydrogen, oxygen 3.44. We're going, to take, we're going to take those numbers and we're going to subtract them. This is called the electronegativity difference. And again, what we do, we take this uh, electronegativity difference. We look on our uh, periodic table of electronegativities, and it says that we have an unequal covalent bond. Okay? So looking here, uh, we're in 1.34 area, unequal covalent bonds, unequal sharing of electrons. So the oxygen is going to have the electrons in this bond a little bit more of the time. So we said it's going to take on that partially negative character. This uh, symbol here uh, is uh, like a lowercase delta, uh, and it means partial. It stands for partial. Uh, and then hydrogen has the electrons a little bit less of the time, so it's going to have a partial positive charge. Uh, 
when we have, uh, so that's what's happening with uh, polar covalent bonds there, or unequal covalent bonds. When we uh, take a look at uh, the other type, which is going to be our weakest type of intramolecular bond, is going to be uh, equal covalent bonds. Equal, or sometimes it's called nonpolar covalent bonds. And this would happen if, uh, in most cases, if you have two of the same elements bonded to each other. So let's say we have like an oxygen bonded to another oxygen. They're going to have the same electronegativities, 3.44, 3.44. They have that same amount of strength. They're playing tug of war with the electrons, and but they're the same exact strength. So when they pull, uh, and uh, sort of vie for the electrons, they're not going to, one oxygen is not going to have the electrons more of the time than the other. Uh, mathematically, finding the electronegativity difference uh, works out to be zero. And looking on our chart again, we have equal covalent bonds. And equal covalent bonds means you have equal sharing of electrons. And in the end, we have no charges, okay? So uh, we usually don't, just don't write anything, but just so we know, there are going to be no charges here, no partial charges or any pull charges. So those are our three types of intramolecular bonds. An easy way to distinguish this uh, is, uh, is just to remember your, your intramolecular bonds these are going to be the ones that are uh, on that periodic table of uh, electronegativities. Okay. Now, once we know what the bonds are like in between, or excuse me, within molecules, we can look at uh, the molecules once you have more than one molecule, the intermolecular bonds. The strongest one is called ion-ion. So let's say that we had... Uh, NaCl with a positive and a negative charge. I'm just going to draw like a circle around it. So that would be, let's say, one sort of molecule of that. And I had another NaCl, okay, positive and negative, and I'll draw that. The bond that's between them right here, that is your ion ion bond. So it's a little bit, you know, splitting hairs, I would say, uh, between an ionic bond is, is within one NaCl. And when you have more than one, for instance, then the bond that's in between them is the ion-ion bond. Okay? So that's that. And it's a very strong bond. Uh, and it's actually this bond that's so strong that, uh, that makes it uh, a solid at room temperature always. The next one is a hydrogen bond. And the hydrogen bond is a, is a special type of bond. It's a bond that happens between a hydrogen of one molecule and either a fluorine of another, an oxygen or another, uh, and a nitrogen of another. And the example that we used was our two water molecules. So we had water here. And a water here. And the hydrogen bond is right here. This is our, this is our hydrogen bond. And the reason they exist, we could go back to our, uh, our charges here that we assign based on their electronegativities. And hydrogen has the uh, partial positive, oxygen the partial negative. For the other water molecule, we should assign those as well, partial positive for the hydrogen because it's got the smaller electronegativity. 
the bigger electronegativity gets the partial negative. So we can see why the oxygen would be attracted to the hydrogen of another because of the positive and negative attraction, opposites attracting. Now, the next one is called dipole dipole. Dipole dipole. When you have um, when you have these uh, partial negative, partial positive, within um, uh, in a molecule like this in this kind of shape. Uh, you have what's considered or called a dipole, okay? Uh, and uh, so if you have a dipole in one chemical and a dipole in another, uh, you have a dipole-dipole force. And so it turns out that a hydrogen bond is a dipole force. It just so happens that when you have a hydrogen of one and a fluorine and oxygen or a nitrogen of another, it's a special type of really strong dipole-dipole. Okay. Um, so if we take a look at uh, something that happened in our lab, we had uh, our glass, main component of glass is silicon dioxide. So we have silicon and two oxygens, O and O. When we look at their electronegativities, 1.9, and 3.44, we can subtract those all right if my math is correct there um, and we come up with 1.54 which is an unequal covalent bond now that means that the oxygens are going to have a partial negative and silicon partial positive and partial negative here. This molecule here, sort of like a glass molecule. And what we did in our, in our uh, lab, we took a capillary tube, put it in water. And water was very attracted to it and went pretty far up that tube, much more than hexane did. And so why would that be? Well, Silicon dioxide, or glass, has a dipole, positive side and a negative side. Well, our water has a dipole as well. So our water molecule might be arranged something like this, sort of in space next to it. Oxygen having a partial negative, hydrogen having a partial positive. So the dipole force that we have would be right there. This is our dipole-dipole intermolecular bond. So we're going from stronger all the way down to weaker and then the last, the weakest one uh, these are called dispersion forces. Okay, and a lot of times they're called London dispersions. And they're very, very weak. Okay, these are these are the weakest of all the bonds, and um, and they're so weak. These uh, these chemicals, if they are liquids, they evaporate really quickly. A lot of times. Things with dispersion bonds are actually gases as well. We we'll use an example of uh, methane, which is CH4. <coughs> From their electronegativities, carbon is uh, 2.5 by 2.55, and the hydrogen is 2.1. When we subtract them, we're going to get uh, 0.4. And we're going to end up with unequal covalent bonds. So hydrogen, the hydrogen is going to have a partial positive because it has a, the smaller electronegativity. We'll draw that in for all the other bonds, which are exactly the same. And so for this methane molecule, uh, 
you have partial positive all around. This molecule itself is nonpolar. It doesn't have anything that's, that looks like it has a pole to it, like a magnet. If I draw another one next to it, another one in the exact same molecules, you're going to have partial positives all around. Here's our molecule. And what we can see is that no matter how we would, this could turn in space, how it could rotate, no matter what, the positives of one molecule would come in contact with the positives of another. And that's going to be a very, very weak, very, very intermittent attraction between them. Uh, and most of these situations, are, these uh, chemicals are actually going to be a gas. Uh, sometimes they're a liquid, but they evaporate really quickly. Okay, and those are your London dispersions, and it would be this bond that's in between them. That would be your London dispersion force.